Yeah, that's guys. Nice, nice, nice. What's bracken, bro? I, I just like come out. What's crazy? Okay, so it was pussy popping. No. Oh. <laughs> that's what the <we're> walk. <laughs> anyway, we're still in the walk oh. period. Anyway, Kevin, yeah. what's our uh, what's our video of the day? So, yeah. so, so this evening we're gonna talk about uh, like the pros and cons, kind of I guess of uh, like having the personality type of sticking to like a group of friends, like one solid group of friends, like a close knit kind of group, versus having like multiple larger groups of friends that you kind of like float in between. It's like I feel like there's there's pros definitely to both, but there's some I wouldn't say like like drawbacks, but like. I don't know, it's, it feels like some things about being one way is better than the other. Mm -hmm. At least in my opinion. No, yeah, I definitely think I'm always like a, a quality over quantity type person. Like, I've always had like a small group of friends. Even my freshman year, I only had like me and Dom. <laughs> like, like, it was like me, Dom, and uh, his girlfriend at the time. We were literally just like it would just be us hanging out like it was that was literally all it was mm -hmm. and it was like it was still like yeah I, I had so much fun i feel like i i still think during that time i still had way more fun than like these people really going out like we went out like when we had when, uh, we went out all the time but like i feel like we had more fun than like a lot of people that just like jump from party to party i feel like that's what i'm saying i feel i feel like some of the we had some like like all my like beginning fun in college was like at like their apartment hanging out and stuff Okay, cat. Maybe a cat brawl going on. Mm -hmm. Don't don't mind this. No cats were harmed in the uh, building of this. Okay. But uh, I would say I've I've got like a good viewpoint on this because I've been both types of people very recently. Like uh, earlier in college, I didn't. I had like my like solid group of, like roommates and friends that we'd hang out with like consistently. But I also. Would like sometimes just bounce from party to party and group to, to group. And I did have like, I would say decently solid groups of people around me, like freshman year. But like, I don't know, there was just something missing when you wouldn't have like, I don't know, it feels like you would have too much time spread too thinly over too many people. And you can't really invest in one person for too long mm -hmm. if you keep bouncing around because, uh, hey, hey, so. <laughs> But like, it's like you feel like you're spreading your time too thinly between too many people. You can't really dig too deep with people. But like in the past, like in the past like year, year and a half of knowing like you two, and we we all came to con very consistently. Yeah. Like I mean, we live together. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time among ourselves, pardon the uh, the the error and the cats, they're broken. They're broken. Mm -hmm. uh, they're broken. No. Anyway, uh, what's it called? Like, the moments I've spent with you guys, we've obviously gone out a lot and, like, met a lot of interesting people, but we've basically, like, stuck to ourselves. Like, I feel like the value in that has created such a strong base compared to having, like, a whole bunch of people that you're, like, all right with compared to having, like, two or three people that you're just, like, rock solid with. Mm -hmm. It's, like, a solid foundation. Like, like you guys don't, like, like you, if you have, like, a close group of friends like this, they don't flake. They're always there. Mm -hmm. But if you have a whole bunch of people that you're not really like cool with or anything, it's like kind of flaky and wishy washy. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't really build a sturdy foundation on that. No, yeah, I, I agree. I'm not saying, yeah, I think there's no point of having like a, what's the point of having like a hundred contacts in the phone if you can only really call five of them? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's, no, there's no point of having this mass quality of people if like they're not really there to help you. Like it just seems like it's also more of like, uh, I also have, I have this thing personally, like, like I don't know if it's like, I wouldn't say like a, like a problem, but just something that I do. Like I kind of, we have like a small, solid group. I like strongly put like all my energy onto like the things that really matter to me. And a lot of it is like, I don't expel a lot of bullshit. Like a lot of like small stuff or stuff that doesn't really matter. So cause I'm just able to like put all that emotional energy back into like my small group of people versus like, like you said, spreading yourself super thin. Cause to me, that's like a, like emotionally drains me. Mm -hmm. To have all that stuff going on, like it like, just takes too much energy. That's what I'm saying. Everyone in high school had those groups where like one group is beefing, doing this and that, and like it just takes so much in your head. Like you're like it's not even important. Like I shouldn't really be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And that, like the whole, there is a big shift from high school to like your early twenties, like where you have these friends because of proximity. Like mm -hmm. close to them, you don't have an option of who you're gonna be friends with. You're gonna pick the people who their views slightly align mm -hmm. with yours over, like 
everybody else, right? But like when you get out into the real world, like you're giving up your time to be with your friends. Like you, like none of you guys owe me anything. Mm. And you, you go out of your way to do things for me and I go out of my way to do things mm. for you. And that, that shows that you really care. It's not because oh, we're just close so we're just gonna be friends. That's not how mm. the adult world works. And you, you build these relationships by like being, being of service to a friend, whether that be like emotional support or like other things that help the other person, right? And you're going out of your way to do those things or else you, you're alone and you don't mm. want that. So you have to like find a way to be useful, right? Mm -hmm. And you do that by being emotionally available for your friends, like when they need to talk and what, what would other things be that you do to like help your friends, right? Yeah, I would say this is a big thing that the lunch or something. It's almost like we and Kevin were just talking about. I don't think people realize like the magnitude of like what you like you when you expel energy towards somebody and they complete shit on it. Like how big that is to somebody. Oh, yeah. Just because like like you said, I don't owe you anything. Like we don't live like in proximity. Like I went out of my way. Like we met each other through convenience or wherever. Mm -hmm. Like since I met you, I'm choosing to go back to you mm -hmm. and hang out with mm -hmm. you and spend this time with you. And then like we don't have limited time, bro. And then like. We spent all this time together, and it was like for you, you just like shit on. It. Yeah, betrayal, like kind of. You can't really come back from betrayal. You can't. Same. You can't go back to where you were after you betray someone. No matter what, you can, because they're always gonna have in the back of their mind, oh, this person betrayed me. Like, I, I have to look out for that. I have to look out for those knives in their hands mm -hmm. when I didn't see them before because they showed their true colors. And exactly. Like, see, that's not good. <laughs> Something that you made me think about earlier. Is like when people come around, if they're not like really feeding into like you as much as you're investing into them, mm -hmm. they're the taking velocity. they're like taking away from you. So yeah, they're they're taking they're taking they're taking energy. your energy and your kindness and everything. Mm -hmm. And if they're not receiving it or if they're not like giving the same back to you, then they're kind of just like just like leeching off you almost, mm -hmm. leeching your vibes. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. If you're getting eighty percent battery left to somebody, and they're like fucking like, giving you back forty. Like, 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 what the fuck is that? Like, you're just draining yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. like, so, like, I think, yeah, I'm saying, I really think that, like, people just don't realize that, like, you're, like, expelling energy. Like, if you're not getting that back, it's definitely a waste of time. Like, you mm -hmm. definitely See. shouldn't do that. And then something that kind of builds off this idea as well is, like, throughout my life, I I realized there's, like, a toxic trait that I had, kind of, is, like, I could be low on, like, like how you are just talking about power, and, like, on, or, like, battery mm -hmm. on the phone, uh, I'd be giving away like my power to somebody else who doesn't really need it. Mm -hmm. I need it more myself, but like I'd be willing to help someone else more, like before myself. It has a problem. Yeah, and most people wouldn't even. I'm glad you called that a toxic trait because I've done that before too. Like mm -hmm. I've caught myself over giving and over sharing my energies, which is just hurting me. Mm -hmm. And that that is a toxic trait because you're hurting yourself. And a lot of people wouldn't view it that way. They'd be like, "Oh, I'm just a good person," but really, you're just. It's like two steps forward, like, yeah, you did something good, but, or it's one step forward because you did something good, but it's two, two steps, steps back forward. because you're, you're mm -hmm. taking away from your energy that you could be using to build yourself and better relationships that with people who actually reciprocate that love and care. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm glad you called that a talk straight, that's good. Because you gotta help yourself before you can help anyone else, honestly. Mm -hmm. Just like the whole statement, can't love anybody until you love yourself. Mm -hmm. But then it's also like in a situation on an airplane, say if your airplane's going down and losing like uh, mm -hmm. pressure in the cabin, mm -hmm. they tell you to put your ma uh, oxygen mask on before you try to help anyone else. Because mm -hmm. if you can't get yourself to where you're straight, but yeah, oh, it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a fun ride. You should get okay. you should have fun sometimes. Yeah, okay. No, uh, but some uh, like they always say, put your mask on before you help somebody else. Because mm -hmm. if you can't make sure you're straight and you're gonna survive, how can you ensure that for someone else? Mm -hmm. like, it's just like the whole. Make sure your house is in order before you tell other people how to clean their house and how their house should look. Mm -hmm. Never do that. That's that's uh, that comes from a place of being higher than another, and that either makes you one look like a dick or two, it's just entitlement, and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. that that's all a part of the ego and self and separating those things. You know, and that's mm -hmm. another topic. Okay. Look at that, dick. Having multiple partners versus one. Whoa. <laughs> Well, polyamorous relationships, not, not, not polyamorous, uh, but as a man having multiple people that you're sleeping with but not committing to, and how that's different than having one person that you commit to. I think... Oh, okay, okay. The I, benefits, because there are benefits for men to having multiple partners that they don't commit to, then that would be confidence boost and options and things like that, which is all is just confidence boosts and things like that, which 
as long as you're not hurting people, that's okay to do. That's an okay thing to do. But like, and then you have a flip side. Hurting people is okay. No, 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 no. no, no. Having yeah. partners that okay. understand clearly that you're not committing, and then versus having one person that you commit to and give your energy to, and they reciprocate that, and then the benefits of those things. Mm -hmm. right? So I think one thing that's important there is first the number of people mm -hmm. involved because. If you're just talking about maybe like two people instead of just one, that's different than if you're talking about like four people. Well, also a difference between like in an extreme saying you're sleeping with 10 people every month, that's not healthy. That's not good at all. That's like, that's, mm -hmm. you're filling a hole. Yeah, and man, especially if you're not wrapping it up. Where are Jimmy's kids? Yeah, then you, then you got kids. Yeah. Shoot. Uh, what's Fuck it called? Kids. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, what's it called? Um, I feel like if... If you have like maybe like two people that you're not committed to, like two or three people, mm -hmm. you can kind of split your time up pretty evenly between that. And like, you could be able to form like pretty solid, formidable relationships. Even then, yeah, you build yeah. friendships with those people and you build confidence for yourself because you're yeah. like, hey, I have these people actually want me and I enjoy my time with them and they enjoy their time with you and it's, it's good yeah. to receive. And like, more so, you can you. still like kind of build with those people. Yeah. Even if like one day it ends up not being like, like going towards like an actual relationship where you guys are like building towards like a real future. Yeah. You guys are still building like solid bases in people that you could probably rely on later. Yeah. And if, the, if you guys are on that mature level. Yeah. And the whole emphasis would be maturity and clear communication. Of yeah. Intentions communication is like number one. Yeah. Of intentions. And then you have the flip side, which would be getting cuffed up. And no, I, I think the only reason why, like we're talking about, like, I think the only reason why, like, like, like talking to a lot of people like, not a lot but like talking to multiple people at once or like just like meeting someone really quickly like the reason why i think like like what makes it by like, make or break basically is for both people to be on both people to be on the same page from the beginning so i feel like the only reason why like i feel like my relationship is like pretty good like mm -hmm. personally i mean it's my biased opinion but like i think it's pretty well and i haven't had one before but in my opinion i think it's better than mm -hmm. most things i see so like um like something I feel like what led to that was just the fact that like even from the beginning when we first started talking, like I feel like I like pushed a lot of times like what like I wanted or like what I was thinking of moving towards and like what page you were on. I even talked about like one of the big things was saying if you have like we've been having any, like real problems and if there ever was like a real problem, like I like confrontation. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's like really confrontation really I was saying, like I like I don't have like I'm just like everyone else, like I don't like like having that talk where you just sit down and you're like, oh fuck, it's about to be like serious or something about to go down. Mm -hmm. So actually no one likes that, but I want to like just get it over with. Like it's this sort of like, we're just like tiptoeing around like the real issues. Like I, I hate that shit. Yeah, no. I think healthy confrontation, definitely. Well, even like if it may start out unhealthy or something, just like true confrontation uh, mm -hmm. may lead to like good development in a relationship, like building trust and respect on a level because uh like it, if you guys set your boundaries that's such a more respectable thing to do than just like never lay it out and lay out intentions and lay out this and that because mm -hmm. you know, then somebody's gonna betray you like we were talking about earlier and mm -hmm. then they're gonna be like well you didn't set your boundaries so you have to be very clear with how you talk to people be very mm -hmm. concise in your speech and be open and honest about what you want and what you don't want Mm -hmm. You have to kind of, if you're getting into a relationship, you have to know what you want and what you don't want, or else you're about to be trampled on by, like, the worst betrayal you've ever seen. Because when you, when you love somebody in a committed relationship, you're giving them that power to actually hurt you. Like, mm -hmm. and that's, like, the power I give you two to hurt me is far less than what I would give a woman that I am deeply in love mm -hmm. with to hurt me, because you have a deeper commitment to that person, so the betrayal is heavier, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Definitely. one of my mm -hmm. one of my favorite lines from uh, Big Sean to uh, most recent cat. <clears throat> hey, D. I was saying one of you just asked. <laughs> no, I was saying one of my favorite lines from Big Sean's new album. He says like, "I'm careful who I with who I love because who I love is who can hurt me." I, I love that. I love that line because like it's just like very important. Like it's very important. It's just like the people you keep in your life. Like it's very important who you like prioritize and stuff because like those people you do really love and do really cherish and care about you can like truly be hurt by them that's what's like for you to like really let your guard down like fully accept someone like your friend 
but yeah. even a relationship mm-hmm. like that, like when someone like goes past that and like does something negative, it's like damn, that shit like really fucking. Like, I I can wrap this back around to the friendship thing. If you have multiple friends, like large quantities of friends, but you're not close with them, you don't have the opportunity to take that mask off that we all wear. Like us, we've seen each other's vulnerabilities, we've seen different sides of each other that the general public would not see, mm-hmm. and that's that comes with the deepening of connections with like getting in the souls and stuff like it, it comes with the conjoining of that and like taking the human mask off that we all wear and that goes into both relationships like if you have a serious relationship you're taking that mask off further and further for that person and that just gives them more power to hurt you mm-hmm. and obviously don't go into a relationship thinking oh this person's gonna hurt me because I'm vulnerable. Yeah. vulnerable vulnerability is not a weakness it's like the it's one of the greatest things humans can do for other humans to show them how vulnerable they are. It's it's probably more of a strength, honestly. Like it's mm-hmm. being strong if you're enough, strong to, show enough to yeah. If you're strong enough to be willing to take hits, mm-hmm. like that's something. And that's why over the years I figured out I'm a strong person, or I believe I am at least. I don't know, maybe there's people out there that are way stronger than I am. But how much you guys? <laughs> no, shoot, that, no, I'm not even gonna get into that. <laughs> no, shoot, but uh, like, I've taken some pretty big hits before in many different facets of life, and it's like, I don't know, I've always been willing to to have the uncomfortable conversations and like take the hits and hear what I need to hear and listen to what I need to be told in situations where I need it, and like be able to learn and bounce back from it, mm-hmm. and like. That's what being vulnerable does. It's like it's like how on uh, Dragon Ball Z, if a Saiyan gets like badly beat in a battle, he's gonna come back way stronger than before. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what happens when uh, when you're vulnerable, I believe. I was just saying something really quick. We just talking about vulnerability. That's why I think one of my fascinations about like the psychedelics are just because I feel like it's like the ultimate state of vulnerability. I feel mm-hmm. like every time, like anytime that I've like consumed something like that, I felt like a lot of my walls have been like dropped, and I feel like, like I feel it like I feel like, like it's a, it sheds that ego, so that ego isn't there. I'm it's saying, just like, you. It's raw. Well, well it's, it's like beauty, like there's beauty, like instance, like stuff like that. Like I and think it's just like, bliss. yeah, like stuff like that. Like, just like not. Like, just not, you, like, barely think about, like, anything that, like, usually bothers you. Because you, you realize like, nothing matters. And it, yeah. And you realize, like, a lot of superficial stuff doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And you feel, like, an ultimate state of, like, freedom. Like, yeah, it's like you said, like, I think you feel, like, one of your, like, happiness. They, like, I think when you're, like, see, like, the most happy, I feel like, is when you could be really comfortable around, like, just mm-hmm. people. Not even, like, a significant other, just, like, friends around you can be your true self. I feel like that's, like, when, like, you're in an ultimate state of, like, happiness, I think. Mm-hmm. The, the best thing, the benefit of having a close circle, and I would say with committed relationships too, is you're building a family. And in a family that isn't by blood, you get to be even more vulnerable because there's no preconceived notion of, oh, this is my child, there's no hierarchy in it. You're just you're people. Mm-hmm. Like you just you have then, mutual respect for each other. And then, like you said, with no like blood relation, you have to choose to be around those people. Yeah, and you, so you, you show up every day. Thing too. Yeah. yeah, you show up ready to work on what you guys are building towards. Yeah, and that's why confrontation. Back into confrontation too. If you didn't have confrontation, you'd just be you'd stall that friendship because you wouldn't get past those little ups and downs that you need to have to grow friendships, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like sometimes negative confrontation is also needed to to really air things out. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's cool to be toxic, but Sometimes, like, not not even toxic behavior. What would your what definition mean? of negative confrontation versus Cause, positive cause confrontation? Like, something that kind of, like... Just to clarify for them. Um, maybe something that, like, leaves a bad taste in your mouth after a conversation. Yeah. Like, like, maybe something turns into a screaming match sometimes. Or you demean a friend's character. You mean something, like, really firm? Like, you saying, like, a, like, a firm? Like, are you saying, like, actually, like, bad? Like, like you're, like, ne- not a name call. Not, but saying, not like, like, tearing somebody down. But, but like, you, you leave like a bold like message to them almost like like a firm like confrontation like almost like, yeah. like hey I don't like what you did and like this like I don't want to like talk to you anymore so like something like that like you're saying mm-hmm. is that what like, you, what you like, yeah that's more what I'm getting at I probably worded it very horribly <laughs> yeah you're right. yeah but like I think sometimes that is necessary to to achieve growth because sometimes you need to break something down to put it back together a different way and better. Mm-hmm. Nah, I learned... And some people don't realize their mistakes until you say, hey, I'm done with your shit and I'm not going to take it anymore. 
Mm -hmm. They don't get to the point of like, oh, this is actually important until you do that. So yeah. one, one, it. one of the, like, it was weird because like, I mean, I'm not like, I'm like, I'm not gonna say I'm a super religious person, like personally, personally, but I do believe that like you can learn lots through like church and stuff, even if you're not religious. Because I went one day, my mom dragged me. I never forget this day, so my mom dragged me to church. And I was like, fuck, I don't want to fuck church. And then, and then I actually learned something that I think about like all the fucking time, and it's weird. And I asked, I, and I remember telling my mom like, thank you, like for letting me make me go. Because this day, like, I learned it was, like, the pastors talking about balloons in uh, anvils. And I think it's one of the coolest things. Like, if you're thinking of yourself as, like, a, a balloon, you obviously just want to, like, you're thinking of yourself just keep rising, rising, and getting better. But, like, you just think about, like, these, like, unnecessary, like, people, unnecessary emotions as anvils. And it's almost like they're tied to your little balloon. And you can never get any higher without, like, cutting the strings of, like, a lot of, like, your, like... Um, like not even like emotions, but like just like wasted energy or like mm -hmm. wasted potential. Like you can't really go, like you don't go so high with that weight on. You. Cause it's like, uh, like for example, like a uh, a power strip. If you've got a whole bunch of different things plugged into it, all drawing energy off of that, it's not going to function. Power, right. yeah. yeah, that's good. I like that. Cause like the 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 more things that you have putting resistance on that that current, you'll be getting current. Yeah. So if you remove, like. The, the resistors, in this case, like unnecessary people or like things in your life, then you can run it like to like a higher potential. Mm -hmm. Like more power. Mm -hmm. Update your graphics settings. Yeah. Get your graphics card and motherboard. Get more FPS. Get cri uh, liquid crystal cooling. You know, we can bring that one back. I feel like that was a really good conversation about um, like friends and like relationships and like unnecessary like things in your life. Oh like, shit. I think so. That was good. Any um, clothing, closing, clothing, closing thoughts, closing quotes. Oh. Oh, no, man, keep your circle tight. Uh, cut your grass low so you can watch out for them snakes. Oh yeah. And drink your water, kids. Thank you. No, oh, said. and wrap your jimmies. That too. They said, um, Drake said, my circle so small is superior. I do feel that. I feel like my circle of people is very small. Yeah, I like that. You're on your period. <laughs> Bleeding out my bottle. Yeah. Alright, team. Trip Team 6, out. Over and out.